listeners, and welcome to another footnote episode of the Fantasy Animation Podcast. I'm Alex Sargent. And I don't have a flapjack, and I'm Chris Holliday. Yeah, welcome to the latest instalment of flapjacking with uh, Chris and Alex. Uh, I've got the second half to eat, uh, which means I'm going to get Chris to talk this time. Um, Chris, today we're going to do um, the subject of hybridity. Yes. Um, how animation and live action can exist in a hybrid form, different ways in which that relationship has played out. I know this is a subject we've kind of touched upon in the podcast in, in and spoken a, 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 at length about in different episodes. I'm pretty sure we talked about it when we did Who Framed Roger Rabbit, right yep. in, back in episode two. Um, we've probably talked about it when we've done Harryhausen. In a way, this podcast is nothing but a hybrid between our two uh, uh, worlds and interests and collides. But but let's, I guess, where should we start with this? Hybridity. What, what 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 why is that when is the term used in animation studies and 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 why that is a terrible that is a terrible start are you going to start I've the, started, you've, started? You've, okay. you've already wasted four seconds uh, okay. criticizing my question okay so i would say that hybridity is an in, is, is an interesting term because it's actually it actually in, i think we tend to think of it as as li- predominantly live action films so whether it's anchors away so gene kelly dancing with jerry mouse or something more recent like 500 days of summer where you have a musical interlude where you have joseph gordon levitt's character accompanied by a um, animated bird to even something you know there's a, a snow white homage in in um, animated sequence in annie hall um sequences in anchorman a bit of animation in natural born killers enchanted mm-hmm. obviously so we i think we tend to and, and as you mentioned who very much a rabbit Mary Poppins and we Mary, probably talked about it with that one Mary Poppins yeah. so we tend to think of live action uh, prominently I, I feel like hybridity is often live action movies with animation in and animation becoming this moment of fantasy or this kind of yeah fantastic interlude and, and I know that writers on, on fantasy um Uh, Jacqueline Furby and Claire Hines have talked about the creative possibilities and techniques for crafting an animated story world and or character, this is a quote, um, kind of enable the production of some memorable fantasy films. So this idea that animation gives us, whether it's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Mary Poppins or Space Jam, it gives us a moment of, animation constitutes the fantasy. That's, I think, what we think of when we think of hybridity. However... Hybridity is actually something that goes back, again, if you if you sort of have a little look on, online at, at the, the history of, of live action movies with animation, we go right back to the, the 1890s and 1900s. We, these kind of early animated cartoons known as lightning sketches or chalk talk to, to cite Malcolm Cook's work. Um, early drawings, uh, early animated films like the, the Enchanted Drawing, so um, a very short film made by a filmmaker, Jay Stuart Blackton, who's made a number of kind of these these sketches where a hand comes in and draws uh, a drawing and then the animation takes over and these sort of yeah, characters come to life. So actually the history of hybridity, animation has always been hybrid. The first cartoons are hybrid. We often have different ways of thinking about hybridity. So we might think of motion capture as an interesting way of, of thinking through hybridity where you have human, you know, motion capture maintains the human as the primary mechanism for creating motion so character with uh, actor with lots and lots of dots on filtered into a computer it's animated you could argue that's hybrid equally something like rotoscoping the forebearer to to um to motion capture where you have tracings of live action footage to rotoshop the scanner darkly waking life hybridity is a very uh, kind of yeah vexed and anomalous term because actually all animation, you could argue, and, and and well, well, large proportions of animation are are now hybrid, especially in the digital era. The sort of ways in which hum, human and machine kind of come together. So, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's an interesting. Uh, but we tend to reserve it, I think, as a term for those kinds of explicit Who Framed Roger Rabbit style moments of transgression between animated world or character and live action world. So that was going to be my next question. Arguably, all films, most films, certainly most popular films made post Jurassic Park mm-hmm. are hybrids in yeah. that they all contain elements of CGI animation and they contain elements of live action in some form. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but that isn't how we, we've sort of tend, the word seems to have deceased being used in that concept um, and is more favoured to be used when we're talking either about kind of cell animation into live action like your Mary Poppins. Or stop motion into live action, so like your yeah, Harryhausens and things like that. Would they yeah. be considered? Yeah, yeah. So hybrids? there's I, again, I think the the if we think of hybrid animation as the blending of say a um, uh, you know 
it's, it's, hybrid animation is often considered as the blending of 2D, 2D and 3D animation, and we're obviously veering in towards kind of mixed media. But when we talk of hybrid, like live action and CG, or live action and animated hybrids, it's usually making the most of the collision between, I'm going to say it, the oil and water of animation and live Coined action. Coined on this podcast. Yeah. No idea which episode. Re- uh, listeners, yeah, let us know. I want to say Black Panther. But anyway, something about the, the way in which these worlds are supposed to animated characters are supposed to inhabit the world of live action but we never cease to believe in the fact that they're different so the filmmakers can mix them but like oil and water they'll never mix them part of their pleasure is often the unique visual perspective that is given by the hybridity of animation with live action or the spectacle of having interaction or having jerry mouse dance with gene kelly and anchors away from the 50s 40s and 50s Mm. So we have settled on a way of thinking about hybridity that goes into, that, that leans very much on a sort of, yeah, a, a, a space jam, a Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Mary Poppins. Um, however, there are bigger industrial questions around hybridity. One, because it encompasses a range of image making forms. It is rotoscoping, it is motion capture. It is the lightning sketches of the 1900s, 1910s into the 20s. It accounts for Felix the Cat cartoons where a hand comes in and draws Felix and we're away. So it's that, but also in, industrially there are questions around hybridity when you get to something like Avatar and whether you class it as animation, whether you class it as live action or to what extent it's a hybrid and the sort of writers on special effects have talked about this idea of the spectator as a connoisseur. Always The spectator of special effects is always a connoisseur because they're always trying to figure out which is the hybrid, which is the which is animation, which is the live action and always cognizant, as you say, in this post Jurassic Park era of which where's the animation and trying to kind of think through hybridity is now a kind of viewing position strangely enough because you're trying to figure out what's what's fake and what's real even though it's all fictional but I guess we there's I know for example there's a scholar Alan Cholodenko who would go even more like radical on this right and say mm-hmm. that essentially there is no hybrid because mm-hmm. animation and live action are essentially the same thing Yes, anyway. And that, yeah, right? and that animation. Do you want to just explain what, why he would, why he might say that? So, Alan Cholodenko, I think, I think it's an article about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and you, I know the, the, that, that's the one that you're referring to because we talked a little bit about it. I no, think. No, no I, I think just more broadly, actually, I was talking about sort of does he basically? Oh, you know, I see. I the see. very technological level, right? A right, live right, action right. Pho- uh, photograph versus an animation is the same technology. It's 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 the illusion of movement through still photography or still images projected at a certain frame rate. So there is anima- this distinction we make between live action and animation is actually cultural rather than it is technological or it's uh, aesthetic rather than technological. So you could argue that this, you know, in a kind of classic um, uh, Derridaian deconstructivist way, breaking down a binary, you know, having a, bu- a binary between yep. live action and animation does more to say about the slippage between the two of them than it does the contrast between them. Yes, the two. it says more about the hybrid. So I would I would say yes. So Cholodenko, his article on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it's 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 interesting because it's it's obviously riding the wave the the post um what well, late late eighties but we talked about this before the sort of collision between the Sim- the release of The Simpsons or the premiere of The Simpsons the Disney Renaissance and Who Framed Roger Rabbit as people are interested in animation again and is an animation cool so he's writing one of the first well he edits one of the first edited collections on, on um, animation one of his articles he's talking about Who Framed Roger Rabbit and, and the question of hybridity I think that becomes a jumping off point for him and many other scholars to talk about the genealogy of animation because one of the preoccupations of animation studies is its genealogy and its convergences where did it come from what does it look like what can we put pull into the orbit of what Paul Wells calls the animated spectrum. Is it is it medical imaging? Is it kind of the gallery space? What what is what is animation? We're still kind of defining it in that in that sense. So it's interesting that he uses the hybridity of a film like Who Framed Roger Rabbit to open up a broader question of well which is the animation actually and, and actually isn't isn't all live action a form of a form of animation. If animation is to give life through a series of still images like a flip book, actually Aren't we really talking about live action cinema as a as a progeny or an offshoot or uh, yeah uh, the son or the daughter of animation rather than the other way around which is often I think as scholars have termed it animation is the kind of weird second cousin of live action well, actually it's the other way around the tail wags the dog right interesting so so how does that square with our oil and water theory then because surely what we're saying is that actually what these films demonstrate is that there is a distinction between the two of them, even if it's a sort of experiential 
distinction. And that's what they dramatise when Michael Jordan plays basketball with Bugs Bunny or Gene Kelly dances with um, Jerry the Mouse. What we're seeing is a failure of integration, but a spectacular yeah. failing of integration because they're not integrated. Yeah. That's what's the illusion is they look integrated, but we know that they are not. Yes, and I think the distinction is one of industry versus aesthetics. So there are big questions around the industrial and maybe even the sort of conceptual framing of animation as this as this as this parent of of live action cinema, but but when we talk of hybrid animation or hybridity and mix, mixing media in this sense between, I mean. Animation can mix media. It can combine stop motion with sat with um, with computer animation. So uh, the Arbrum films, the recent Ar Arbrum films, combine stop motion with digital effects. And Eilish Wood has written a chapter on um, pirates in an adventure with scientists, um, exactly about that. About we think it's stop motion, but actually a lot of it's CGI. So there's that kind of mixing media. But when I when we said oh we should do an episode on hybridity, it was that it was that Who Framed Roger Rabbit yeah. template. I would say that what high there's there's a kind of reflexivity as you say a failure to integrate um and it, and hybridity is, it becomes this weird viewing position of i know very well but i know i know one thing but well, it's it's plasmaticness it's hesitation it's sort of i know one thing but all the while i know the other thing so i i know that these two i'm enjoying the dance between gene kelly and jerry mouse but actually I'm aware that they're doing this independently and and, and there's a kind of weird compromise position that one has to occupy when watching these kinds of mixed media spectacles yeah. because they, as you say, they're dramatising both integration and the failure to integrate at the same time. I mean, we run out of time, but I'll, to, to cure up your final question, yeah. um, it also, I, I've, I've spoken about this in that in the, actually also what it also does is, is dramatise the kind of the basic illusion of cinema that the camera is the eye because the camera can't be the eye if there are two objects within the camera. You know, one, you know the, the illusion that the photograph is the eye breaks down if part of the photograph comes from one source and part of the photograph yeah. comes from a different source. Or one, so. of the, one of the photographs is actually a newspaper clipping that they've just yes, put exactly. over the top of, exactly. a, of a photograph. So so if, if people want to read more about this, if they're interested in hybridity, where are some go-tos? So I would say, um, I'd, I, yeah, Malcolm Cook's work on early animation I think is really important because it's, it's sort of talking about the role of the performance artist or the performer, the animator, as part of this early, early animation hybridity, the relationship between the, the human performer that we see the hand of the artist and the animated uh, images on screen so I'd go that one Cholodenko's work probably on, on Who Framed Roger Rabbit because it's about that moment and I know we've talked about this previously the sort of the moment where the, the baby moves from the animated space in the film into the mm -hmm. live action space and kind of does some interesting stuff around around hybridity in that sense and maybe Eilish's chapter on on pirates um, just just because yeah. it's a different way of thinking about hybridity it's not live action and yeah, and, sure. and, and animation it's actually we can think of hybridity within animation as a as a um, medium very interesting. Right, well, that's us for another episode. Um, I've not finished my flapjack. I've actually left half of it. It's quite big, so um, <laughs> the saga continues. Uh, it's been two weeks now, and I'll let you know how it goes on the next yes. uh, footnote. But for now, um, if you've got any suggestions for future episodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mentioned Derrida then, just as just saying. You know, want us to do that for 10 minutes. Chris is already excited about that, I can tell him. Yeah, I'll um, spell it. <laughs> or anything else that isn't, you know, post-structuralist French theory. Um, some sort of term, some sort of key idea, something you'd like us to clarify. Are you a student with an essay coming up? Yeah. You, uh, a, week, a week on a module where you're doing something like yeah. a, um, you know, a, a cell animation, a stop motion. We've done that. So stuff oh, like that. We'll, we'll, we'll sing for our money. So uh, <laughs> fananim research, F-A-N-A-N-I-M research at gmail.com. Uh, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram with the same handle. Fananim research will do the same job. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye.